One of the things that I really like about working with the guys at Strike King is they're all fishermen and they understand my point of view when I say, you know, a bait needs to be changed a little bit or, you know, we've got to change the color or we got to, this appendage has to be a little bit thinner on this plastic bait. They know that it's the subtle little things that make a difference between catching a few fish and having a real awesome bait. One of the things we try to do at Strike King is, is keep our colors fresh and cutting edge and, and really to match the, the forage and for all these different water conditions that we face. <laughs> You can just cast it out there and you know reel it back to the boat but if you're doing that you're really shorting yourself because there's so many other ways that I really like to fish it. First and foremost for shallower flats I try to use this bait where it's going to be hitting the bottom so I'm going to kind of you know use my rod tip to, to control that depth along with the size of my line. You know I'll rig up a couple of different rods with different line sizes anywhere from you know 10 or, or so all the way up to maybe 17 or 20 because I want to make sure that that bait is coming in contact with whatever's out there. If it's, you know, if it's a gravel bar or a rock point, I want it to be hitting the bottom. If it's grass, I want it to get so it's getting into the gra grass itself. So, you know, if I've got to try to keep the bait up, I'm going to hold the rod tip up while I'm reeling it. But the one thing is, is when it does hit something, I always like to rip that bait up and let it flutter down. And the beauty of the red eye shad is it stays balanced, it doesn't turn over on its side, and it has a shimmer or a wiggle as it swims back to the bottom. And that's when they really bite it. So I try to make this bait fall a lot. If I'm, again, fishing it over a flat with some type of cover on it, I want it ticking that cover every time it does. Just pop the bait, let it kind of flutter for a second, and continue that retrieve. I reel it fast enough to you know keep it down on the bottom. So if it's a little bit deeper, six, seven, eight foot, you're gonna have to slow, the, you know, you're gonna have to slow your retrieve down a little bit. One of my other favorite techniques for this is just the pump and you know just a pull and stop type uh, retrieve. Instead of working it like a jig with your rod tip up where you're really lifting it off the bottom, I just keep my rod tip to the side and just sweep it and then just follow your uh, your bait back down. I want to just keep tension on the, the line but let the bait fall and that lets that red eye shad do its thing. I mean that's when it swims to the bottom and I'll catch a lot of fish doing this. This works really good if I'm trying to work a little bit deeper flat. I'll, I'll do it over grass, it, I'll do it over rocks, whatever covers the, you know down there, it doesn't really matter, but that, uh, that just pump and stop retrieve is a deadly way to fish it. I probably catch more fishing it this way than any other way. Um, if I get out to where I'm fishing in even deeper water, I will kind of yo-yo it on those ledges. Uh, same kind of places you'd throw a big crankbait, stuff like that. I'll cast it out there, keep my line tight, let it sink all the way to the bottom, and then just kind of hop it up and follow it back down. And the three quarter ounce red eye works the very best for this. If you, you know, if you wanna get it down 15, 20 feet, you need that extra weight that it has. I use the half ounce uh, a lot in that seven to 12 foot zone. If I go deeper than that, I do like to go to that three quarter. Again, this is something you wanna use lighter line to, to help get the bait down there and keep it down there. I always use fluorocarbon for this bait because I just I feel like it helps keep the bait down deeper because the fluorocarbon sinks. I get a really good feel with it and uh, it really gives me great lure control. It's real low and stretch so I can get a good hook set even on a long cast. These are lures that you want to throw a long cast with. Uh, a red eye shad is going to be real effective if you make a long cast you're covering a lot more water with it. So you know I usually throw it on a 7 to 7 foot 10 inch fiberglass composite rod and uh, I really like that because I get the feel of the graphite, but I also have that slow reaction time of the softer glass built into the rod. So uh, it works really well. I've got enough power. If I get it in the grass, I can snap it out and, uh, and clear that bait. And it's just a fantastic way to fish the red-eye shad. There's the bait.